Hello and welcome to this video. What are we going to learn today? Well, what if I asked you, can you tell me the pH level of hydrogen ions in water, in one molecule of water? Or if I asked you what the level of sound measured in decimals is while you and I talk or what volume you listen to music at, the level? Or even better, if I asked you, can you tell me what is the difference between an earthquake that is measured at an intensity of six versus seven on a Richter scale? How are these all questions, the sound, the chemistry, the measurement of earthquakes, I will include the light too, or accounting, banking, how is it related to the topic of today? Well, of course, the topic of today is going to be logarithm and it is related to logarithm. So if you want to know more, let's go straight away dive in and understand what this is about. So logarithm is nothing but a scale. It is a scale to measure large numbers. You know, when uh, numbers become, have more number, have more digits. For example, if you have numbers that have multitude of digits, and then we have to perform multiplications and divisions of those numbers, whether they go in decimals or they go, you know, way beyond the scope of writing on a piece of paper or even feeding into the calculator. It goes beyond that scope. So how do we come up with answers for that? That's where the historians, and you can go ahead and look for the history of how it came into being, a logarithmic scale was invented. So it is basically a tool used in mathematics to help us perform multiplication and division of large quantities of numbers especially when we are reading large numbers. So today, we are going to understand how this, in a sense, basically works. There are two main components of logarithms that uh, oftentimes students in their schooling years encounter. One is the algebra, directly the mathematics behind it. And the second is the graph, the graphical representation of logarithms. So we will do both. But in today's video, it is just going to be an underlying baseline concept of what logarithms are, and we will understand how it works. All right, see you around. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the basic understanding and write the form of a logarithm and what this concept really means, okay? So now, if I asked you a question, what is two cube? You will give me the simple answer, it's gonna be eight. Let's find out how. Okay, so we write two cube is nothing but two times two times two, which is eight. Similarly, if I wrote what is 10 cube, you will write, tell me it's gonna be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1000, right? But what if now I asked you, I want you to tell me what is 10 power 10 times 3.24 raised to the power of 500 equal to. Well, we might key, it, key this into the calculator, but sometimes there are numbers like these that cannot be keyed into the calculator itself. So what happens is you get an error on your screen or we're gonna run out of space. And even when we have to, like for example, another example that I'd like to give is 14 times, let's say 10 power uh, 50,000, divided by one, although in real life, the numbers are much simpler, but just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, I'm writing these numbers, uh, 1.3 times 100 raised to the power of 20. Okay, just I've just come up with this. Then what is the answer? So in order to make these kind of complicated calculations easy, we have a tool called logarithms. So how do we utilize that? Let's understand. So if you know how to use logarithms, rewrite all of these two examples, the multiplication or the division, using logarithms, it becomes just a process within seconds on your calculator that you can get an answer. But let's understand what is going on in the hindsight. All right, so let's go back to our example of two cube equal to eight. In this example, two cube equal to eight, we know the number two is the base, three is the exponent or the power, I will just write short forms, and eight is the answer that we get. So 
Now I'm going to write logarithms in the base, uh, it, it, the basic form, underlying basic form of logarithm. It's written as the word log to the base, whatever the base is, A being an argument, which is the number, and this is going to be the answer. Answer meaning this is actually going to be the exponent. So now if we wanted to write 2 cube equal to 8 as a logarithm, how will we write that? So we will write log, the word log for logarithm, to the base 2, okay? And a meaning this answer right here, which is 8, and exponent is going to be 3. So that means the question that any logarithm is answering is to what exponent am I raising the base? What is this exponent to get my answer as 8? That is going to be 2 cube is going to give me 8. So similarly, if uh, we say, for example, if I wanted to find out 4 to the power of cube, which is going to be 64, I already know that. If I wanted to write this as a logarithm, I will write this log. What is the base number? 4. What is the answer? 64. And exponent is going to be 3. Meaning, to what power or exponent shall we raise a given number to get the answer right here for the logarithm? So that's about it right here. So there are properties of logarithms. There are graphings that we will learn and how this applies to the Richter scale is another thing that we will also learn and I, we will employ on that. Okay, I will, if you liked it, then move on to the next video to learn about the properties and a lot more. Bye-bye.